Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. In this video we will discuss in details, the basic concepts of economics. After this class, we will have generated brief idea about needs, wants, demand, supply, demand curve, supply curve, market, types of market, market equilibrium, utility, consumption, consumer surplus, law of diminishing marginal utility, price, value, GDP, GNP factors of production, national income, and per capita income. This video is a part of our course on engineering economics. We will cover all related topics one by one. Before starting, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, just click on subscribe, and press the bell icon. Here, we come up with new videos on different subjects, to make the academic studies easier for you. So, into the topic. Needs. Needs are the state of self-deprivation in an individual. The starting point of marketing is human needs. Human needs can be physiological, social, cultural and individual. There are unlimited human needs. All new inventions try to satisfy the human needs. We cannot imagine marketing activities or existence of the market in the absence of human needs. Physical needs include, food, clothing, shelter, safety, water etc. Again. Social belongings and affection, and individual knowledge and self expression also denote needs. Wants. Wants are desires for specific satisfiers of needs. The needs of the human are unlimited. So, to satisfy unlimited needs, a person desire for different products, services, and methods. Such desire to satisfy the needs is called wants. Wants depend on the culture, social class, and individual personality. A marketer can influence human wants by providing a variety of need satisfying objects. Demands Demands are human wants backed by ability and willingness to buy. The person wants only those goods which provide them maximum satisfaction. Marketers can also influence demand by offering products at different price and quality. In other words, demand is the amount of product that the customers are ready purchase at a given price and time. The conditions of demand are Desire for a commodity Purchasing power Willingness to pay Again, supply is the amount of commodity that the sellers are able and willing to offer for sale at a certain price and time. Law of demand The law of demand is a microeconomic law that states All other factors remain constant, if the price of a product decreases, consumers' demand for the product increases, and vice versa. Demand Schedule It is a table that shows a range of prices for a certain good or service and the quantity demanded at each price. This is a demand schedule. This table shows the price for each gallon of gasoline, and the change of demand with change of price of each gallon. According to the law of demand, as the price increases, the demand for gasoline falls, and, as the price decreases, the demand for gasoline increases. The law of supply is the microeconomic law that states that, all other factors being equal, as the price of a good or service increases, the quantity of goods or services that suppliers offer will increase, and again, if the price of a good or service decreases, the quantity of goods or services that suppliers offer will decrease eventually. Supply Schedule Supply Schedule is a table that shows a range of prices for a good or service and the quantity supplied at each price. This is a supply schedule. This table shows the price for each gallon of gasoline, and the change of supply with change of price of each gallon. According to the law of supply, as the price increases, the supply increases from supplier's end, and, as the price decreases, the supply also decreases from supplier's end. Now, from the demand schedule we will get the demand curve, and from the supply schedule we will get the supply curve. The demand curve is a graphical representation of the relationship between price and quantity demanded of a certain good or service, with quantity on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. This is a demand curve plotted from the data from the demand schedule. With demand quantity of gasoline on the horizontal axis, and the price per gallon of gasoline along the vertical axis, demand curves will appear somewhat different for each product. They may appear relatively steep or flat or they may be straight or curved. Nearly all demand curves share the fundamental similarity that they slope down from left to right. Similarly, 
The supply curve is a line that shows the relationship between price and quantity supplied on a graph, with quantity supplied on the horizontal axis and price on the vertical axis on a graphical plot. This is a supply curve plotted from the data from the supply schedule. With supply quantity of gasoline on the horizontal axis, and the price per gallon of gasoline along the vertical axis. The shape of supply curves will vary somewhat according to the product, steeper, flatter, straighter, or curved. Nearly all supply curves, however, share a basic similarity, they slope up from left to right and illustrate the law of supply, as the price rises, say, from $1 per gallon to $2.20 per gallon. The quantity supplied increases from 500 gallons to 720 gallons. Conversely, as the price falls, the quantity supplied decreases. Equilibrium, where demand and supply intersect. Because the graphs for demand and supply curves both have price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis, the demand curve and supply curve for a particular good or service can appear on the same graph. Together, Demand and supply determine the price and the quantity that will be bought and sold in a market. This figure illustrates the interaction of demand and supply in the market for gasoline. The demand curve, D, is identical to this figure of demand curve. The supply curve, S, is identical to this figure of supply curve. This contains the same information in tabular form. Remember that, when two lines on a diagram cross, this intersection usually means something. The point where the supply curve, S, and the demand curve, D, cross, designated by point E in this figure, is called the equilibrium. The equilibrium price is the only price where the plans of consumers and the plans of producers agree, that is, where the amount of the product consumers want to buy, quantity demanded, is equal to the amount producers want to sell, quantity supplied. This common quantity is called the equilibrium quantity. At any other price, the quantity demanded does not equal the quantity supplied, so the market is not in equilibrium at that price. The word equilibrium means balance. If a market is at its equilibrium price and quantity, then it has no reason to move away from that point. However, if a market is not at equilibrium, then economic pressures arise to move the market toward the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. At any price above equilibrium, the quantity supplied exceeds the quantity demanded. We call this an excess supply or a surplus. With a surplus, gasoline accumulates at gas stations, in tanker trucks, in pipelines, and at oil refineries. This accumulation puts pressure on gasoline sellers. If a surplus remains unsold, those firms involved in making and selling gasoline are not receiving enough cash to pay their workers and to cover their expenses. In this situation, some producers and sellers will want to cut prices, because it is better to sell at a lower price than not to sell at all. Once some sellers start cutting prices, others will follow to avoid losing sales. These price reductions in turn will stimulate a higher quantity demanded. So, if the price is above the equilibrium level, incentives built into the structure of demand and supply will create pressures for the price to fall toward the equilibrium. Again. When the price is below equilibrium, there is excess demand, or a shortage, that is, at the given price the quantity demanded, which has been stimulated by the lower price, now exceeds the quantity supplied, which had been depressed by the lower price. In this situation, eager gasoline buyers mob the gas stations, only to find many stations are running short of fuel. Oil companies and gas stations recognize that they have an opportunity to make higher profits by selling what gasoline they have at a higher price. As a result, the price rises toward the equilibrium level. So, let's look at the terms we just learned under demand and supply. The demand curve is a graphic representation of the relationship between price and quantity demanded of a certain good or service, with quantity on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. The demand schedule is a table that shows a range of prices for a certain good or service and the quantity demanded at each price. Demand is the relationship between price and the quantity demanded of a certain good or service. The equilibrium price is the price where quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. The equilibrium quantity is the quantity at which quantity demanded and quantity supplied are equal for a certain price level. 
Equilibrium is the situation where quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied, the combination of price and quantity where there is no economic pressure from surpluses or shortages that would cause price or quantity to change. Excess demand is a situation in which at the existing price, the quantity demanded exceeds the quantity supplied, it is also called a shortage. Excess supply is a situation in which at the existing price, quantity supplied exceeds the quantity demanded, also called a surplus. The law of demand states the common relationship that a higher price leads to a lower quantity demanded of a certain good or service and a lower price leads to a higher quantity demanded, while all other variables are held constant. The law of supply shows the common relationship that a higher price leads to a greater quantity supplied and a lower price leads to a lower quantity supplied, while all other variables are held constant. Prices what a buyer pays for a unit of the specific good or service. The quantity demanded is the total number of units of a good or service consumers are willing to purchase at a given price. The quantity supplied is the total number of units of a good or service producers are willing to sell at a given price. Shortage is a situation in which, at the existing price, the quantity demanded exceeds the quantity supplied, also called excess demand. The supply curve is a line that shows the relationship between price and quantity supplied on a graph, with quantity supplied on the horizontal axis and price on the vertical axis. The supply schedule is a table that shows a range of prices for a good or service and the quantity supplied at each price. Supply is the relationship between price and the quantity supplied of a certain good or service. And finally, surplus is a situation in which, at the existing price, quantity supplied exceeds the quantity demanded, it is also called excess supply. We learned these topics, now let's look at what is market. By the traditional definition, Market is a place of a regular gathering of people for the purchase and sale of provisions, livestock, and other commodities. By the marketing definition, market is the set of actual and potential customers of a product. And, market according to economics is a mechanism through which price of products is determined by the direct or indirect bargaining of the buyers and sellers. Types of market Market can be classified based on the economics point of view traditional point of view, the marketing point of view. Based on the economics point of view, market can be classified based on imperfect and perfect competition. Based on the traditional point of view, market can be classified as local, national, and international market. Based on the marketing point of view, market can be classified as consumer market, and industrial market. Based on the imperfect competition, market can be again classified as a monopoly, with one seller, duopoly, with two sellers, oligopoly, with few sellers, and monopolistic, with many sellers. Utility Utility can be defined in many ways. Simply, utility is the capacity of a product to satisfy the needs. Utility is what the product is or it is the inner power of the product for which customers pay. For example, the utility of food is to remove hunger, the utility of water to remove thirst. Thus, the utility or the inner power of a product satisfies the needs. Consumption Consumption means finishing or destroying the utility of a product through using by consumers. In other words, consumption is the process of utilizing the utility of products. Consumer Surplus Consumer surplus is the difference between the total amount that consumers are willing and able to pay for a good or service, indicated by the demand curve, and the total amount that they actually do pay, that is, the market price. Let's look at the relation between consumer surplus, producer surplus and total surplus. The difference between the willingness to pay price and the market price is the consumer surplus. Likewise, Sellers can sell a product at a higher price than their economic cost to produce a product. The difference between the economic cost and the market price is the producer surplus. So, consumer surplus equals to willingness to pay price, minus market price. And, producer surplus equals to market selling price, minus economic cost. To measure total economic welfare, we can add the consumer surplus to the producer surplus to arrive at the total surplus. Therefore, the total surplus equals to consumer surplus, plus producer surplus. Note that, in the above equations, 
for consumer surplus and producer surplus. The price paid is a common term to both. Since the price paid is a positive term in the producer surplus and a negative term in the consumer surplus, the price paid is cancelled out resulting in the following equation for total surplus. Thus, total surplus equals to willingness to pay price, minus actual purchase price, plus actual selling price, minus economic cost. Total surplus equals to willingness to pay price, minus economic cost. Economic costs refer to not only the seller's cost of materials and labor, but also the opportunity cost of the seller's time and effort. Hence, economic cost includes a normal profit. Note that, in this graph, consumer surplus equals to people's willingness to pay minus the actual market price, while producer surplus equals the market price minus the seller's economic cost of production. Hence, the total surplus equals to the total area for the consumer surplus plus the total area for the producer surplus. Here we can see, consumer surplus equals to the area above the market price and below the demand curve. While producer surplus equals to the area below the market price but above the supply curve. The Law of Diminishing Marginal Utility the law of diminishing marginal utility states that commodities become less valuable as more of them are acquired. The British economist Alfred Marshall explained the law as such, during the course of consumption, as more and more units of a commodity are used, every successive unit gives utility with a diminishing rate, provided other things remaining the same, although, the total utility increases. The law can be also stated as, other things remaining the same. When a person takes successive units of a commodity, the marginal utility diminishes constantly. Let's explain the law of diminishing marginal utility with schedule and example. We assume that a man is very thirsty. He takes the glasses of water successively. The marginal utility of the successive glasses of water decreases, ultimately, he reaches the point of satiety. After this point the marginal utility becomes negative, if he is forced further to take a glass of water. The behavior of the consumer is indicated in this schedule table. Marginal utility may decrease into negative utility, as it may become entirely unfavorable to consume another unit of any product. Let's take another example, the law of diminishing marginal utility directly relates to the concept of diminishing prices. As the utility of a product decreases as its consumption increases, consumers are willing to pay smaller dollar amounts for more of the product. For example, assume an individual pays $100 for a vacuum cleaner. Because he has little value for a second vacuum cleaner, the same individual is willing to pay only $20 for a second vacuum cleaner. The law of diminishing marginal utility directly impacts a company's pricing because the price charged for an item must correspond to the consumer's marginal utility and willingness to consume or utilize the good. Now, let's look at how we discriminate between price and value. Price is the amount we pay to get something. Value is the amount of satisfaction we get from a product. The extent to which a good or service is perceived by its customer to meet his or her needs or wants measured by customers' willingness to pay for it. It commonly depends more on the customer's perception of the worth of the product than on its intrinsic value. Value is a ratio of the perceived benefits versus the price paid. GNP The term GNP is the abbreviated form of gross national product. It refers to the total monetary value of all final goods and services produced by the citizens of a country within their own country as well as outside the country during a period of one year. The simple formula used for calculating GNP is GNP equals to C plus I plus G plus difference between X and M where GNP represents gross national product. C represents consumption. I represents investment. G represents government spending. X represents export. M represents import. And, the difference between X and M equals to the balance of trade. GDP. The term GDP is the abbreviated form of gross domestic product. It refers to the total market value of all final goods and services produced within a year by the factors of production located in a country. GDP is obtained by subtracting the net foreign income from abroad from GNP. So, 
we have completed these topics, there are three more topics left. Let's look into factors of production and their incomes. We can demonstrate factors of production and their incomes as in the following table. Land is a factor of production, whose income is called rent. Labor is a factor of production, whose income is called wages or singular wage. Capital is a factor of production, whose income is called interest. Organizer is a factor of production, whose income is called profit. National income. National income is the sum total of all income payments made to the factors of production. Factor cost view. Components of national income. The following are the components of national income. Rents. Compensations to employees, wages. Interest. Profits. Per capita income. Per capita income shows the average level of income earned by the people of a country in a specific time period. Per capita income is a ratio of the national income and the total population of a country. So, we have learned in details the basic concepts of economics and have generated a brief idea about the terms needs, wants, demand, supply, demand curve, supply curve, market, types of market, market equilibrium, utility, consumption, consumer surplus, law of diminishing marginal utility, price, value, GDP, GNP, factors of production, national income, and per capita income. Thank you.